Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, in the last episode, we met a couple of new girls, and uh, we started looking around the place. We had a map. We had choices of places to go, which was great. And at the end of the day, we handed over the sheet, and we're just heading back to the canteen with Olga. So, I headed to the canteen together with Olga. I looked at the sky and noticed that the sun was already setting. On the porch stood Elisa, electronic. Liana and Slavia. Uncle Tom Cobley. As we came up, I heard what they were talking about. And never call me Dvasha again or I'll get another one. I didn't call you that, you're hearing things. He did. He did. I heard it all. You weren't even there. I was. I was. I was right behind you. I was in the bushes. Come on, you guys, stop it. So, it wasn't a football injury Electronic suffered earlier today. The nurse did a good job. I couldn't even see his black eye. Olga Dmitri came up to them and asked them about the ruckus. What happened? Elisa and Chetkov. I didn't do anything. She shrugged with antipathy and went inside. Right. Dinner time. I entered last. The view was great. There weren't too many free seats. There were a few chairs near Elisa across the canteen, but I'd sooner starve for a week or two than risk my head near her. There was also a seat near Iolana, but I'm not into her traditional Chinese whatever crawls cuisine. Finally, a free chair near Miku. Looks like I'll have to pick my poison. Do you mind if I sit here? Oh yes, yeah, sure. I mean, no, I don't mind. I mean, yes, you can sit here. I sat down. Look, it's buckwheat today. Do you like buckwheat? And chicken? I, like, I don't like chicken. Well, not if I don't like it. But if you ask me, uh, what I'd rather prefer to say is stroganoff, beef, or ragu, or no, maybe, just a hamburger, or rum steak. Do you like rum steak? I'm not that particularly picky about my food. I just don't like it to crawl. And that's the simple truth. Oh, is that so? But the desserts, you know, they are really good here. I like ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I just love 48 Kopecks and Leningrad's Co. Oh, sorry, I keep on talking about myself. Maybe you like Eskimo better. Mm, Eskimo. I couldn't eat a whole one. Dinner was starting to get on my nerves, thanks to such company. And I'm not the kind of person that can just ignore someone who's talking to them. Even her. We're all at the same table, after all. You know, I once bought a waffle cone and started eating, and then you know what? I found a screw there. A real screw. Can you imagine that? Or was it a bolt? I don't really know. Screws are those things you tighten with screwdrivers. Bolts are those things you turn with a wrench, yes? If there was a speed eating contest going on, I'm probably in the top three winners by now. Right. I'll be going. Enjoy your meal. I got up and headed outside. Miku was saying something, but her words were drowned by the crowd of loudly dying pioneers. I went out and sat on the stairs, waiting for my dinner to settle down a bit. I just sat there and watched the night falling. Everything is so lively here during the day. Kids laughing and yelling happily, fooling and running around, constant chatter, games going on and swimming at the beach. But after dark, the camp changes entirely. The sounds of the day are swapped for silence, only now and then broken by crickets chirping or a night bird. The camp was going to sleep. In every shadow you could see things, maybe a ghost, or a spirit of the forest, or a wild animal. A human being would be the last thing to expect. Nobody expects human beings. And that is how it looked last night. And now... The locals followed their routine very strictly. In the day, the camp was there. In the night, it belonged to 
more to the forces of nature than to humans. Someone touched my shoulder. I looked back. It was electronic. Let's go play cards. Cards? Yep, I invented a new game. A good one. If I win, you take all your clothes off. Good, like how? Well, first we got to go find the cards, then I'll tell you. Then go find them. What's the problem? Only Olga has them and she won't give them to me. Why so? Well, the last time when we... Olga and Slavia came out onto the porch. Olga, Semyon just asked you, wanted to ask you about the possibility of getting paying cards. Actually, for what purpose? We invented a new game. Not we. You did. What game? I need the cards to show you. Mm. I don't like this. The cards shall never leave. Well, if Semyon is with you, then perhaps it's okay. To be really honest, we'll go fetch them together, Olga. <sighs> Let's get to know this Slavio a little better, shall we? If you don't mind. Sure, let's go. We headed towards my cabin. Roughly halfway there, Slavia stopped. Hey, I just remembered. The cards are in my cabin. Good timing. And where's that? Just down this road. Let's go. Obligatory ellipsis joke. We reached a cabin that in fact looked more like a trailer. Just wait here a minute. I'll be back. It took her just a few seconds to come back. There. She showed me a deck of pretty worn out cards. These must be marked in and out. That's unsportsmanlike. What happened to fair play? Tell me about it. It's hard to cheat when you don't know the rules. Shall we go? Let's go. On our way back, I decided to try and find out about something. How long have you been here? In his camp? About a week. I see. And where did you come from? I'm from the north. That is... The cold north. She looked at me and smiled. Looks like nobody in this camp is inclined to answer even the most innocent of questions. I try to approach from another angle. And what do you like? What do you mean? Well, your hobbies? Oh, I like nature. Strange, she's not very talkative today for some reason. Nature, I see. Want to become a natural historian? More like a normal historian. I was always interested in our nation's history. That would suit her well indeed. It appeared that among all the locals, she was the only one who had nothing to hide. Well, if she came here just like me and simply could not trust anyone enough to tell. I tried testing the waters. And why did you choose this camp? I didn't. My parents got a voucher for me from their work. Voucher for a person? Good lord. Another failure. Well, if you could choose? It's nice here. I don't think I could choose another place if I could. It's like you're becoming another person. That wasn't how I saw it. What do you mean, another person? It's just that there's so many possibilities. You can learn so much, meet so many new and interesting people here. Oh, yeah, and electronic. Now she started to sound like our chief, which raised a red flag for me. I decided to stop the questions for now. When we came back, Olga told Slavia, I just remembered that the cards were at your place. 
It's okay, we got it. Good. Good. Slavia and Olga went inside. I was going to follow, but someone grabbed my hand. Elisa. Her gaze sent a shiver down my spine. Not a nice one. You want something? I asked carefully. You're going to play this stupid game? Mm, yes, something wrong with that. Nope, nothing. I was turning to leave, but then slowly looked back and smiled. So, you play cards? A little. I couldn't figure out what she wanted. So, only Durak and that's it? As if you're a poker star. Well, yes, technically. Then you don't have a chance. Why? Because. So, you know the rules? Of course. Well then, you'll have the upper hand. I couldn't see why we'd have, we would go on talking and motion towards the door. Why do you keep trying to leave? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Let's make a bet. What do you mean? You're such a slowpoke. The cards, what else? And what do you want to bet on? That I'll win. That's quite a possible outcome. I agreed calmly. So, are you afraid? No, I'm not. I'm not big on bets when I don't like my chances. And not big on taking risks, too. Such an astute observation. I'm impressed. Right, then, I... No, you're not! Now what? I sighed in exhaustion. She was starting to annoy me with her rubbish talk and about some pointless bet. If you won't bet with me, I'll tell everyone that you tried to seduce me. Go fetch my weapon, assume the position. What? You heard me. I could imagine her doing this. Don't be stupid. Who's going to believe you? I've been here less than two days, besides. Want to try your luck? Right. And what will happen if I win? I won't tell anyone anything. And if I lose? Slowpoke mode again? I'll tell everyone you tried to seduce me. I told you already. So you're telling me now that I have to work to prove that I didn't do something, but I didn't actually do it. If that's how you want to look at it? Not a simple decision. On one hand, it was stupid to agree. I didn't know the rules and gambling wasn't my thing. On the other hand, she could really make my life hell. Then again, can I even trust her? She can do it even if I win. So, have you made a decision? I was going to answer, but suddenly Lena came around me from behind. What? Nothing. Lena hurried inside. So? There's a few questions we need to ask here, okay? If we bet with Elisa, yeah, I mean, things could go wrong, things could go right, we could lose, we win. We do not bet with Elisa, she could just spread the rumours anyway, but I think the question we ask, want to ask here is, hmm, is, is Semyon a sub? I mean, let's be honest here, okay? Yeah, I think possibly Elisa might be the person to whip him into shape, and yes, I did mean that pun. Uh, but let's try betting this bet. I may regret it a hundred times. In fact, I might have already. Fine, I'll do it. She smiled. But if I win... Yeah, yeah, all fair. No cheating. Elisa turned and went up the stairs inside the canteen. Why am I doing this? Because she can set me up regardless if she wants to. Since she decided to anyway, I let out a heavy sigh and followed her through the door. Inside, everything was ready and apparently devoid of people. A few invisible pioneers stood here and there, chatting. The tables were moved out of the way to make room for players and spectators. 
I looked around. Something was going on in the far corner. When I came closer, I saw a large piece of paper with a diagram drawn on it. My name was among the players. And who came up with all this? I patted Electronic, who was standing near. Ooh, okay. Well, of course it was your most humble servant. He bowed to me jokingly. This made me uncomfortable to the point of squirming. Actually, it probably made me uncomfortable to the point of running away, but there seemed to be no escape. You're right, you may never leave. And why in the world am I among the players then? I was disappointed. A few seconds ago, I thought I had a slim chance to evade this tournament. Then I wouldn't have to fear Alyssa's revenge for losing the bet with her. But now that hope was gone. It was pure coincidence. Yeah, right, coincidence. Except that I was already acquainted with every one of the contestants. While there were a few dozen other pioneers standing in the room, I was seized by anxiety, fondled by doubt. It was the beginning of, it was the feeling of being watched while standing in an empty room with no windows and doors and wondering how long the oxygen would last. Will there be a prize? I asked him lazily. I wanted to distract myself with pointless conversation. Electronic was just about to answer when Oliana came out of nowhere and started jumping around him. Prizes. Um, prizes. I heard something about prizes. Do you know what is the main ethos of the Olympic Games? A what? No. You'll understand when you grow up. She made a wry face and jabbed Electronic in the ribs. So, what about the prize? Well, I don't know. It's not up to me. He made a helpless gesture. If it was up to me, the winner would be rubbing baby all over me, especially if it's Semyon. Really? If they came up with this stupid game, at least they could give winner a chocolate medal or something. Uyana suddenly jumped and raced off to somewhere. I wish I was that optimistic. So, what about the rules? Wait a bit. Not everyone is here yet. I looked around the canteen. Alyssa, Slavia, Lena, Miku and Shurik were here. It seems like everyone is here. Not everyone. Jenya isn't here. Does he feel uneasy? Or is it just me? I think he might have just been drawn that way. She's not here. So what? Pick someone else instead. No, I can't do that. He answered slowly. I decided not to ask exactly why he can't do this. Well, go fetch her or something. I don't know. He can leave. He's the host of the event. The camp leader appeared as if from nowhere. But Olga... Electronic whined. Simeon will go. Right, Simeon? She looked at me and smiled. Of course, who else? Where is she? In the library, I guess. Okay. I dragged my feet towards the door. Please hurry. What's Electronic's problem anyway? Night is coming soon. I was going to take my time, so I slowly paced towards the library. But I found Xenia even before I expected. She was sitting on a bench in the square, staring at Genda, who was silent, as always. What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. Who's <sighs> sitting here, as you can see? She frowned. Well, let's go. I don't want to. She looked away. Why not? I don't want to. I sat beside her. Listen, I don't like the idea of this contest myself, but we can't let everyone down. 
Surely, I surely didn't sound like myself there. A couple of days ago, I wouldn't even think of saying something like that. Xianyu looked at me with surprise on her face. Everyone is waiting for me? <sighs> Isn't that exactly what I said? Yes. I won't go anyway. She frowned and hid her face. She hid it in a house three streets away. It was very, very disconcerting to watch. But why? I gestured with my arms, wondering. I don't know how to play cards. <sighs> so what? Same problem here. Then how can you play? What? You can only do things that you've read about in books or something? Of course. She was surprised. Yeah, you can look, she looks really surprised. And what if you end up in Antarctica and have to rely on hunting polar bears to survive? Oh, read that book. Oh. Polar bears don't live in Antarctica. Genius smiled. It doesn't matter, it's just an example. Come on, it's not like someone else's life depends upon the result. She took her time to think. I just don't want to let anyone down. Right. I agreed sarcastically. And don't you think something's funny about that? I didn't get what she meant, but anyway, obviously everyone has their weak spots. In minutes we were both back at the canteen. Everyone looked at Electronic. So? He cleared his throat. Each round consists of one game. In the case of a draw, you replay the game. After this, the loser drops out and the next round begins. Since the number of volunteers... He looked at me. Since the number of players is just eight, we'll only have three rounds. Is everything clear? The crowd cheered. And what are the prizes? The prizes! What are they? Uliana, cut it out! Slavia stepped forward and tried to catch Uliana. I won't rest until the prize is mine. Seemed like this girl alone had enough energy for a warp jump to Alpha Centauri. Prizes! Prizes! She repeated it over and over. Stop it! Slavia tried to reason with her. Electronics seem to be getting dizzy from all this running around. Let's start already. I said calmly and added to Ileana, or oh, you won't get any prizes. Looks like my argument got through to her, so she took her place. Slavia followed her, giving me a grateful smile as she passed. The pioneers finally settled down. I approached the table that Lena sat behind. Don't you mind? She looked up and blushed. Don't worry, I don't know the rules myself. And how can I be sure that it's not only myself? I sat down. Turns out we'll have to play the first round together. Yes. Finally, Electronic started to explain the rules. Look at the cards carefully. There are exactly six of them in front of you. I hope everyone here knows how to count. Now you can look at them. Good lord. Everyone had a look at their cards. Electronic moved on, and perhaps Electronic can move out of the way. The rules here are similar to poker. I hope everyone knows how to play. I knew the rules, but I wasn't sure about the others. First of all, it's the top card, then one pair, then two pairs, then three of a kind. Ooh, three of a kind. Ooh. And so on. No flushes or straights, though. In the first round, you choose a card that you would like to take from your opponent. In your turn, the opponent can choose to swap two of his cards around twice. Or he can choose not to do so if he doesn't need the card you're taking. Take a note here that your opponent can see which cards are trading places. 
In the next step, your opponent takes the card he chooses, and so on. I think it's pretty clear. It wasn't too clear to me. Hey, you, Einstein. Uliana yelled from her table. I didn't get a thing. You'll figure it out as you go as we go along. Electronic went to the table with the diagram, leaving Uliana to smolder in solitude. You go first. Um, wrong voice. You go first. I think I'm going to play this even though we've run out of time, just to get a round out of the way. I hoped I could get my mind around this game fast enough. Lena, more perplexed than usual, reached out for my cards. In the middle of the table, her hand stopped. Will you... Oh yeah, I should be protecting my card. What was it Electronic said? Try to confuse my opponent. I can swap two of my cards. Twice. Or I can choose not to. Should I protect it or not? By the way, I can also agree to give her the card so that she chose straight away. Otherwise, Lena can change her mind to take another card if she wants to. Or she might not. Oh, right, okay. Right, so I can swap cards around. I could, for example, swap those two. And she's moved on to the queen, which is not good. Uh, swap those two, see what happens. And uh, she's picked the ace, which is even better. Things are becoming clear. Yes, I'm losing like a bitch. Or at least comprehensible. Now it's my turn. I can take back my card from her, or I can choose another one. Well, I want that ace. So, let's pick that ace. Lena can try to protect her card, but if I watch her closely, I can take the card I chose regardless of her movements. Right, well, she swapped over those cards. I want that card. And I want that card. I got the ace back. Well, I got a different ace back. Okay, I made it! Electronic, who was silently watching our game, nodded in approval. Looks like we're getting somewhere. Now, during the round, the opponents trade cards three times. Keep an eye on each other. Penetrate your opponent. With your eyes. With your eyes, I said. I chuckled. Penetrate. What's so funny? Oh, never mind. I tried to keep a straight face. He stared at me for a moment, then moved on. And then we turned the cards up to see whose hand is better. Electronic went back to his diagram. Okay, so. Our rival is Lenya. We have an ace, a six, a six, a two, a king, a three. Okay, so we have a pair already. And yes, what a pair they are. So let's just grab a card. Oh, she's picking one off of me. She wants that three. Well, let's let her have that three. I don't want that three. Go and have that three. Um, X, X, K, okay, right. There we go, right. Mm -hmm. Alright, so uh, we don't want a three. Let's have that card. Let's see what that card is. That one. That one. King. Alright, pair of kings, pair of sixes. This is turning out quite nice. So, right, we don't want to have that six. So, let's swap those two over. Don't want to have that king. So, let's swap those two over. And that worked. We still got two pairs. That's excellent. Um, rounds left. Exchanges left. Let's have that one. Still want that one. Still want that one. Okay, she wants that one. She uh, well, actually, she's got a three already. Do we want to give her a three? No. Um, actually, yes, because we've got two pairs which are higher than that. So you have that three. We won't defend it. Alright, and we'll have that card. 
we have that card. We still have that card. Uh, that's an ace. That's no use to us at all, really. But we still got two pairs. We win. She ended up with a two, a three, a pair of threes, a jack, and some very suggestive queens. And I'm, I'm slightly worried about that because electronic seems to be a suggestive enough queen. All right, and we ended up with a two, a pair of sixes, a pair of kings, and an ace. So we won. I won. Seriously, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to play a game which was made up on the spot, and not by yourself either. But I won. Although the moment of glory is tainted by the fact that it was Lena who was the loser. She's not very confident in general, but now she's lost. I'm too embarrassed to even look at her now. Probably I should have lost to boost her self-esteem, but I have a bet with Elisa. Meanwhile, Electronic proudly announced that the first round is over. A list of those who made it to the second round appeared on the scheme after a little while. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to leave it there. Rounds two and three will happen in the next episode. And this should be interesting because it looks like we're playing Uliana. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this. This game is getting weirder and wackier by the minute. It's absolutely fantastic. So, until the next time, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Not Endless Summer, as I said last week. Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.